be with you today and speak about MHPSS, mental health and psychosocial support, innovations, responding to child protection concerns during COVID-19. My name is Ashley Namiro, and I'm an advisor for the MHPSS Collaborative for Children and Families. The COVID-19 pandemic and its control measures have had a significant impact on the mental health and psychosocial well-being of children and families, particularly those already vulnerable due to poverty and displacement. The COVID-19 pandemic has actually put mental health in the spotlight with leaders at the highest level, including the UN Secretary General Guterres, calling for mental health to be front and center to every country's response and recovery from the COVID-19 pandemic. In this presentation, we'll look at the high demand for MHPSS resources by child protection and other humanitarian actors. Child protection actors play a critical role in the provision of quality MHPSS as part of the multi-layered continuum of care that exists across sectors. The demand for MHPSS resources was high as CP programming was rapidly adapted for the constraints of COVID-19. The pandemic demonstrated the high level of need for children and adolescent focused guidance, tools, technical support on MHPSS, and in addition showed the value of strong engagement of child protection actors in MHPSS coordination and technical working group. The MHPSS Collaborative as a global facing entity provided technical MHPSS expertise across sectors and agencies, working with the Child Protection Area of Responsibility, the IASC MHPSS Reference Group, UNICEF, and Save the Children. We helped to create the Well Being of You and Your Children, which is a resource put out jointly with the CPAOR and was adapted for video animation and audio files to ensure broad reach. Also a resource on communicating with children about death and helping children cope with grief. We worked with the ISG MHPSS reference group to develop My Hero Is You, which is a children's book for COVID-19 that saw rapid global uptake. Also with UNICEF to develop the IASC MHPSS COVID-19 operation guidance through the child IASC subgroup. And lastly, worked with Save the Children on tips for parents and caregivers during COVID-19 school closures. And together with UNICEF, the collaborative chaired the child and family subgroup of the IASC MHPSS reference group, which included members of the Child Protection AOR and other child family MHPSS and CP agencies. This coordination group was very central and important to resources on MHPSS for children and caregivers throughout the response and continues to be. And an important piece of work that we recently released and worked on with Save the Children is a 60 to 90 minute session that is in the form of a check-in, which takes place after children return and see one another again or start a new activity after a long period of COVID-19 restrictions, such as school closures, uh, closures of child-friendly spaces or child-friendly activities. The intention is to create an understanding of what has happened and to reduce any feelings of anxiety, sadness, or confusion. Also, advocacy on the importance of MHPSS in the COVID-19 pandemic response was extremely important and key to building back better and more effectively linking mainstreaming MHPSS across child protection, education, and health. And now I'll speak briefly about the outcomes and the impacts. So we saw that a lot of these resources that were rapidly developed had a broad reach and uptake. For example, My Heroes You was translated into a hundred different languages. Also the Child Protection AOR reports that the resources we co-developed had rapid uptake and the materials were demanded to be translated into various languages and into innovative formats to increase accessibility um, globally. 
So some challenges that we want to note that came up during the COVID-19 pandemic is that really prolonged school closures and stress for caregivers. Uh, we saw the need for resources across the development spectrum for children and adolescents and their caregivers. And we also saw the increase increased reports for self-harm and suicidal ideations among children and adolescents who are unable to access safe spaces. Um, also, humanitarian responders across sectors, including the MHPSS community, were directly impacted by the pandemic. And just like we saw in the Ebola crisis, the high need for care of the caregiver came out. Also, one challenge we saw was there remains a misconception about what MHPSS is and what it's not, and the lack of understanding of how activities specific um, to sectors can contribute to the whole holistic MHPSS response. So a lack of skilled and qualified MHPSS technical staff limits the opportunity for broader capacity building. We also know that MHPSS activities, interventions, training, and ongoing supervision remains crucial and becomes even more difficult when you can't have those face-to-face -face interactions which speaks to the importance of these uh, digital platforms. So in conclusion, the COVID-19 response triggered both a high-level commitment to the prior to prioritization of MHPSS and a huge demand for practitioners and communities across child protection and other sectors to really focus on uh, resources that were accessible and child-friendly. Um, MHPSS can and should be integrated into all national emergency preparedness response and recovery. And this should really include youth and caregivers in that response, uh, ensuring that they're part of developing those response mechanisms. And lastly, as we know, MHPSS cannot effectively be provided in silos. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a lovely day and great chatting with you.